Good morning. It is not that morning. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> it's after daylight savings, so it is amazing out here. Um, it's a little chilly today, which is perfect for me to get started on finalizing the last of the irrigation for the beds that I just finished filling. So we're gonna do that. I don't have my key to unlock this. I have gathered all my supplies. We have the emitter tubing. We have four, four inches in between. And I really picked this one because I want it to saturate the entire bed. And sometimes with the emitters further out, it takes a long time to saturate and it doesn't do it all around the bed. And I was really hoping to get the entire soil bed. Uh, this is a 15 milliliter thickness, which is really good for the amount of sun that it's going to get in the summer here. We have half inch poly pipe. Both of these are easy to cut, easy to install. I've laid out most of my supplies here. I have 22 staples in each bed, and these are eight inches heavy duty staples. There's two here on the front and that makes the 22 uh, because I don't need too much to hold this line in place. I have my water line coming from here in the corner. I'm going to run the poly tube here along the edge with that Karma Lock end cap. I really like those. I think it's easy to flush the line. You can easily take off the end and then I'm going to cut four pieces of drip line and you can see that over here this is a really good example so here's my drip tape and on each drip tape I have one of these shut valves and it has the same feature the permalock so you slide the tubing in and turn it and it tightens it and it shouldn't pull out but I will say that you have to check your lines really closely because sometimes you don't put it in all the way and the pressure will make it pop out and then you'll have a mess. Here's the tubing, here's the end cap, here's the staple there, and then I should have a staple here in the middle. I don't know what happened to it, but that's the second staple here. And then I have four rows of staples and that tends to keep it in place. I don't need any more of those staples because it's not that cheap does take a good investment to lay out all this irrigation. Now this one has been a little tricky. I have an elbow coming from the water line down below. This is a pressure regulator, which at first I didn't think I needed, and then I applied it, and then I'm not sure if I truly need it. I didn't measure the length of this, so that's why this is coming up higher than what I want it. Um, so I didn't take account for the length of this one. It, when I didn't have this before, this laid perfectly in the ground bed, just like that. So I'm on the fence. I did have some issues with the line dripping, so I tried that, but I think I just needed to tighten this a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that on the other beds and I'm gonna show you if it works or not, because I don't know if I really need this. So looking over from the far end over there, which is actually the beginning of where the water is coming in. You see the water lines. These are capped because I haven't finished putting the irrigation on these, which I will work on these. I'm just waiting because I have to cut these lower and I have this that I have to come back and redo. Um, but I have four lines, main lines, that are coming along this side of the garden, which is the very front. Each one of these is on its own zone. So I have four zones. This line here is zone one, got zone two that works for these two rows. Zone three does the same thing. And then the last zone um, runs the lines in the back. Let me show you what I mean about these two beds over here. So these two beds, I would say two rows. The water line 
is over on this side. So it runs here, but then also shoots to this bed. And it does the same thing over on that end. So technically all these lines are on that one zone plus that end of bed and this one. So we have the same setup for these two beds. I hope that wasn't too confusing. But, you know, I did, I did break my head trying to figure this out and no experience other than my garden bed before and going through a lot of YouTube videos. That is the best that I could come up with and I think it's really working. I was worried about pressure. The pressure is great. First, I didn't put the um, pressure reducers because I was thinking, well, it's a lot of water, it's a lot of beds. I don't technically need it, but you know, I'm still testing it out. I am planning on removing them. I really don't like that it's like a little bit higher than what the bed is in the corners. Um, I don't wanna dig deep, cut the line again. So we're gonna try it with the new beds, with all of these, without it again, and see how that works. Some of the other supplies that I have are a measuring tape, you really need that, a pencil, scissors, this hole punch, and yeah, I think that's it. Oh, one more thing. Over on the end, these are also end caps. And so what I was saying about twisting it so you can flush the lines because you will get things in there one way or another things end up coming in or but it's a complete flush out so I can flush one line individually or I can flush the main line over here with that end cap I'll take this off all right we're gonna do this without pressure reducer so I think that on the tightness is because of the location where it's at so it's harder for me to tighten it here another thing to do is to add um, plumbing tape on there make it a little tighter fit but we're gonna do it this way and see how this one works I like to try things See what works best less things the better so this is already pulled back all the way i'm going to measure right about there over and i need 38 inches of the poly tubing this is too short so this is the spare that i have okay here we are See how you can get soil in there as you're working. 38 inches is right here. Cut that there. Okay. Ideally, I would go measure the other beds and see if this is what I need. So I'm probably gonna do that so I can have all these ready. We're gonna do this together. Just because I like company. All right, so then this is what I do. It's better to cut in a straight line. So you don't have to do extra cuts. You can always just trim it. So you don't want to measure all the way to the end of the bed because you have to put your end cap on. So this measures about two, two and a half inches. So I've got three done, I need one more. You do need a little bit of strength to cut this one is not easy to cut. The 
thankfully, it's that much. The rest is the tape and that's super easy. On the other beds, on the last home, most of my drip was polytubing and it was a struggle because you have to heat this up to make it easy to go into the fittings um, and it's not flexible. So this is as far as you go to make a turn. So you have to have, I mean, I don't know, a foot and a half in between. And I think that's good for trees and large plants, but I don't think it's great for a vegetable garden. Um, so it wasn't the best for me. I think this has worked good so far. Um, and the only problems that I've had is the end caps, um, me not putting the tape in all the way and uh, the tape coming out. Um, so I've had a couple of, you know, water issues, but other than that, um, it's not anything that, that I can fix easily. Something that I just did wrong myself. So I actually really recommend it. All this stuff is from Drip Depot. They have everything there. Um, I will put a link down below and I will try to list all the things that I put. I might just put a, uh, a description of my receipt. <laughs> For a garden this big, I know a lot of people are curious on how much you spend. Um, I would say that I think I spent, I will say that the four inch um, emitter spacing, that roll was on sale. Um, and I don't know if it is right now, but I think I spent a good $1,200 on all the supplies. I laid all those out. Now I'm going to measure the drip and I need to cut four strips for each bed and that's four beds, so that's 16 pieces. So let's go do that. Once you get the first measuring, then it's just pulling it and cutting it. I've laid out all my cuts. Now I'm ready to install them. This is the only part that is a little struggle to get in. You can do the same thing with this. Just heat up, heat up the tubing so it can easily go in. Or just use all your strength <laughs> to get it in. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now it's time to turn it and tighten it. Okay. All right, that's that. The next part is you'll need your pencil, your measuring tape, and the hole punch. I am measuring three inches from here over because that actually makes about seven inches or so for the first line. And it's the only one that's a little bit different just because of the measurement. After that, it's every 10 inches. So that means that my water line is going to be inside the 12 inches square so that I can put the plant next to the drip line. You don't want the drip line to be at your 12 inches so if I was at 12 inches let's just put an example if I was at 12 inches that would be over here so my drip line would be here if I plant in the middle my drip line is too far so the first one's a little bit closer and which really works out because I'm closer to the end of the bed and this part dries out a little bit more um, so seven inches and then after that I measured 10 inches away. So for the seven inches, I need to measure three inches here. So that's my three. And then from there, measure 10 inches. Now that I did my measurings, this is the hole punch. That's where that's gonna cut. So I want to be 
just slightly, slightly lower than straight. Um, so I don't know if you can notice there, but I'm just a little bit lower. And I might have not done that as good as I wanted to, but that's the idea. Let me show you close up. This is what I mean. So the way I did it, see how it's a little bit facing north and then tilting it a little bit down, we'll put it right at the center. So you see the difference. So this one's just gonna be a little bit off, but it's okay. Now comes this part, this piece, you press in. I love the snap and there's that. You see what it did? Right now I have this up, but it's a little bit facing up. So that's the only thing, you know, making sure you punch the hole a little bit lower. <laughs> Let's do the same thing here. So see, that one's a little bit better. All right, so to put this in, you can have the emitter too close. So if you do, you have to cut the emitter out. Um, that's why when I was making the cuts, I was making it right in the middle because if I need to, I can cut from this side or from the end and I have space. So the idea is you gotta make sure that this is all the way to the back and then all you do is just slide it in. But this is the part that gets a little tricky because as you're turning it, the emitters will start turning over. So let me show you what I mean. So then you're gonna have the emitters facing this way. Unless you want that, I don't want that. So I'm going to slide it over on this side so that when I turn it, you have to have a little bit pressure. Then it'll start turning straight. So there we go. That's that. Now for the end cap. It's the same thing as the elbow. You gotta make sure that we're twisted to the back and you have to make sure that this is tight unless you're gonna flush the line first, which is ideal. I will say that these emitters here also have a trapping mechanism. So the emitter is this big and in here you have some zigzag in between. That is to trap any debris from clogging that emitter. But that is only for just in case. You do still want to flush the line, especially at the very beginning. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Apply that pressure. It's easier if you wiggle it. Once it's all the way in, as far as you can go, then, I don't even know how to twist it. Twist it in. This one you don't have to worry about holding this because this is too tight in there. And there we go. Now I'm going to hold it with a staple. I haven't put my mulch down, but it's a good idea to put your mulch. I'm going to plant soon, so I'm going to put my mulch after. Now that the lines are, are laid out, I'm going to go ahead and put my grout stable. It's going to be between the emitters. Those two I'll do when I go to the other side. thing is that these are flexible. You can move them around as you see fit. Okay, now we're at the very end. I need to go get my scissors and then we can move on. Okay, this is the last piece. Same thing. I, I'm actually going to probably not tighten these. No. I'm going to tighten them and then I'm going to flush the line one by one so I don't have water everywhere. 
So I'll tighten these for right now. Um, these I have to scoop up. And so the plan is that this is at the edge. So I'm a little short here, but it's okay because my emitter is right here. So that covers this area really well. Same thing as the other one. You're gonna press in as far as you can go with a little tilt. And then this one's easier to tighten because you don't have that shut valve. So then, then you have this for a good grip. And that's it. See, oh, that's pretty good. There's that. So 35 inches of drip tape for each line and these are 12 foot beds 12 by 4. it might be a little bit off because i don't know if i'm counting for that extra inch of the uh wood but technically it is a 4 by 12 bed and there you have it one bed ready three more to go. All right, all of the beds here are done. Now it's time for me to lay out my seats and I was patiently waiting for that. It didn't take me too long to do it. I would suggest to do it in the very early morning when the weather is cool. Don't wait in the summer when you truly need your drip system because it is hot outside. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.